My name is Niels Blau. I'm a long-time paddler and instructor. I've been teaching the forward stroke to, for at least 10 years to various students. Keep your pedal high. Keep it far away, at arm's length whenever possible. When making a stroke, go as vertical as possible. Rotate your back. Try to use the muscles of your back instead of the muscles of your arms. I've taught that stroke to at least a hundred students and every once in a while one of them asks me why? And I do have answers that mostly satisfy them, but they hardly satisfy myself. Let's see. Keep your pedal high and at arm's length. Well, this is quite a tiring position. There may be a benefit in uh, movement, freedom of movement, but at what cost? I think the cost is enormous of having to carry your pedal like this. I wouldn't carry my groceries like this. Try to make your stroke vertical. Well, that definitely makes sense in a white water boat that doesn't track, but in a sea kayak that does track, you might as well take it easy, take it a bit further out. Your boat will go forward anyway. There may be a little benefit in keeping it close, but at what cost? At the cost of again lifting it, lifting it, and spraying yourself all the time. Is it worth it? Rotate your back. Use your back instead of your arms, because those muscles are the strongest. They're best equipped to do the job. Well, if that were generally true, that your biggest muscle are the best, then I should scratch my head like this, using my back and my shoulder and my neck. Those are big muscles. I don't. I scratch my head like this, which is what most mammals do, use the smallest possible muscles for any job they have to do. That's the most efficient. So why on the water would it be different and would we have to use those big muscles when small muscles will do fine? So here's my big brain wave. Let's not look at movement, let's look at rest. This in pedaling we seem to call a position of rest. Well, it isn't. To a steel crane, this would be rest. It could keep it for days or weeks without expending any energy. To me, it's not rest. This pedal is just 1.3 kilos, but I want just to know, put my pedal in my hands resting on a skill. It's at 7 kilos, and that's what I'm holding up like this. It's heavy. Now, of course, when pedaling, I wouldn't keep it up like this. I would move which feels more comfortable. Like that I perhaps could keep it up for a few minutes more, but not 15. And certainly not for an afternoon of paddling. So how do we do it? Simple actually. If you don't do it by keeping it up, then you probably do it by resting it. I take a big suitcase and I rest my pedal against it. And suddenly I can feel a position of rest. I have an upper arm that is really only leaning against the pedal. Not much force there. One arm that is hanging from the pedal. My shoulders are just hanging. And suddenly I'm just hanging. This is a position of rest. Against the suitcase this is a nice static, static position. On the water it will be different because the water will move. My pedal will drag through it, it will push the suitcase back, and also it will push me forward. I can already feel myself being pushed out of this chair, which is exactly what we want, which is a forward stroke. Basically, when I put my pedal in the water, rest my body and just use gravity, water will go back, boat will go forward, and I will move. By not moving a muscle, not lifting a muscle, I can move my boat. And suddenly all our advice starts to make sense. Keep your arms stretched. Yes, if I bend them, the pedal will tend to slip down along the suitcase or into the water. Only when I stretch them can I find a position of rest. Keep the pedal high. That becomes redundant. There's nowhere else to put it. Keep it vertical. Obviously, if I don't.
then both my arms and my pedal will want to go down. Uh, again you have to use force to keep it up. Not if I keep it vertical. I want more at that position of rest. So much for the good news, now the bad news. There's no such thing as perpetual motion. I will have to put in energy. I can make a stroke by just using gravity, but I will have to put in energy somewhere. And I will do it between strokes. At the end of the stroke, I will have to lift my arm and pedal above my head to get ready for the next stroke. And this is where I put in energy. After that, I can again let gravity do the work until that stroke is over. Put in force, use gravity. Put in force, use gravity. Now let's see how things work on the water. A good way to get a feel for it is to drive your boat into the dock. If your boat doesn't move, your stroke will get longer, giving you more time to get a feel of that rest that I'm talking about. So I lift my pedal, put it in, and rest. Add power, and rest. Add power, rest. Add power, rest. And yes, it does work. Now there are some concessions to make. If I keep it really vertical, I keep spraying myself. I personally don't like that. So I like to keep my pedal a little bit lower to keep the water from my head. Also, I pedal a pretty wide boat, which means to get it vertical I must reach out. It's not too comfortable, and yet another reason to keep your pedal a little more flat, even if you expend more power like that. Now to make your stroke even longer, and by that make your rest even longer, you can rotate your back. You can stretch out your upper arm. You can bend your lower arm. It won't get more efficient like that, but your rest will become longer. And that might be worth the trade-off. Now when pedaling, it's pretty much just the same, just a little bit faster. I plan to... <laughs> meet my live studio audience. I plan to use these explanations on my students this year. I plan to give them a boat, let them uh, float it into a dock, stand next to them, so I can shape their arms and pedal. And I would tell them to really look for that feeling of rest when they rest their pedal in the water. And only when they feel the rest disappearing because their arms get too low, but I ask them to quickly change sides and go for that rest again. Change sides, rest. Change sides, rest. When I manage that, I will start talking about using your back to make the stroke that much longer and your rest that much longer. Maybe a quarter of a second, always good. I don't know if it's really efficient to use your back, but you brought them, you might as well use them. I will talk about adding force by really putting in the power and what, what muscles to use. But I will urge them to always return to that position of rest. That's your long distance forward stroke. Take it easy. Try to use gravity. Now personally, I don't like the trade-offs. I don't like to drip on my head, I don't like uncomfortable positions, but neither do I like to carry the weight of my arms and pedal. So what I do is I bring this. This is a pedal carrier, 
It's an invention of my own. It's patented. Now in surf, this thing stays below my spray skirt or below my bungees. In hairy conditions or when I expect quick braces or rescues, I just push it down and out of the way. But whenever possible, whenever I got some nice lazy pedaling long distance to go, I put it on my deck and what I have is a roller to put my pedal on. That will take the weight of my pedal and arms. As soon as I tip the pedal, it will roll down into a forward stroke. When I tip the pedal, it will roll down into a forward stroke. Just lift it up and it goes to the other side. Thanks for watching.